Hi, Arita. How are you? Hi, Rosie. Long time no see. I'm all right. How about you? I'm also fine. What are you doing? I am doing some work on computational chemistry. Have you heard about that? No, not really. What is about? Well, computational chemistry is a branch of chemistry that uses computer simulations to solve chemical problems. It helps us predict the behavior of molecules and materials without actually performing experiments. That's fascinating. I want to learn more. Sure, but let's discuss this while having a coffee. Is that all right? Yeah, sure. How is the coffee? It's perfect. Now tell me more about computational chemistry. Are there any broader divisions in this vast subject? Yes, certainly. There are two major types, quantum calculations and molecular dynamics simulations. Today, let's focus on the quantum calculations part. We'll talk about the MD simulations another day. Okay, got it. What are the different softwares used in this type of research? Many softwares are available, such as Gaussian, NW Chem, Orca, and many more. Each software has its own strengths and weaknesses, and researchers choose the software based on their requirements and the type of calculations they want to perform. However, other than different softwares, we have to use different basis sets and functionals for different types of molecular systems. That's interesting. But what are basis sets and functionals? Basis sets are a set of mathematical functions that represent the behavior of electrons in a molecule or material. Functionals are mathematical algorithms that use electronic density to calculate the energy and other properties of the system. Then, I think those must be derived from various theories, right? Absolutely. Several theories are used in computational chemistry, including Haytree Fock density functional theory, Moller-Plesset perturbation theory, and coupled cluster theory. Can you explain each theory in more detail? Sure. Haytree-Fock theory is a method of solving the Schrödinger equation for a system of non-interacting electrons. It assumes that each electron moves independently in an average potential created by all the other electrons. The theory is based on the idea of self-consistency, which means that the wave function for each electron is determined by the average field created by all the other electrons. Okay, what about density functional theory? DFT is another method for solving the Schrödinger equation, but takes a different approach. Instead of trying to solve the equation for each individual electron, DFT focuses on electron density. The electron density is a more fundamental quantity than the wave function, and it can be used to calculate many of the properties of a system. That's interesting. And what about the Moller-Plesset perturbation theory? This theory is used to calculate the electron correlation energy, which is part of the total energy that arises from the interactions between the electrons. In many cases, the electron correlation energy is the most significant contribution to the total energy and it is often difficult to calculate. Moller-Plesset perturbation theory is a way of approximating the correlation energy by adding small perturbations to the wave function. And finally, what is coupled cluster theory? Coupled cluster theory is a method for solving the Schrödinger equation for highly correlated systems, where the interactions between the electrons are strong. It is one of the most accurate methods in computational chemistry but it is also one of the most computationally expensive. This theory involves expanding the wave function in a series of excitation levels and then solving for the coefficients of each term in the series. What do you mean by computationally expensive? This means this type of calculation requires much more time compared to others. That's really helpful, Aritra. Can you suggest some books and websites for me to start? Sure. Some of the best books for beginners are Computational Chemistry, Introduction to the Theory and Applications of Molecular and Quantum Mechanics by Errol G. Luors, and Essentials of Computational Chemistry, Gories and Models by Christopher J. Kramer, 
to understand the underlying theories. Also, there are various YouTube channels you can follow like David Sherrill, TMP Chemistry, etc. for understanding the concepts. If you want to use specific software, I would recommend going through its documentation, which can be found on its official website. However, I also have a YouTube channel, CompChem Studio, where I post solutions to different walkarounds to some problems I encounter. Thank you so much, Aritra. This has been very helpful. I'll subscribe to your channel, and I am very excited to learn more about computational chemistry. Let's meet another day for the MD simulation part. Anytime. Also, you can contact me at www.oritroroy.live or comment on my YouTube video if you have any questions or suggestions. Certainly. Now, I have to go. Yeah, see you later.